Knowing how to bounce back from almost anything is called resilience. But in today's video, we're going to talk about what resilience is and how do you improve upon what you already have. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. I've been in some camps where people feel like resilience is one of those things where either you have it or you don't. I come from the school of thought is if you already have some, let's go ahead and improve upon that. But if you don't have any, you can get some too. So the quick and dirty definition of resilience is the ability to bounce back and recover quickly from setbacks and negative experiences. It encompasses a number of things like the ability to adapt to certain difficult situations, but also having a positive outlook and understanding and knowing that it won't always be like this. And you can turn that pain into passion. You can turn that fuel into fire. So essentially it's not about running from your problems and it's not about saying, oh, I got to get away from this and you're running. It's you tackling those things head on because you have the confidence and the assurance you can get through this just like you have got through all of the other things that you have gone through in your past. Because I am a living witness that that muscle that you're building when it comes to resiliency, it makes you better spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, and financially too. So let's talk about the first way that you can improve upon resilience and that is to develop problem solving skills. This is going to help your ability to manage your own personal stress, but also to break down some of the bigger problems that you have that are overarching in your life into smaller, bite sizable, manageable things. So you feel like you can come and overcome and complete and do the things because it isn't this big thing, but it has been broken down into very manageable steps. So problem solving, having good communication skills, managing your stress, managing your time, all falls under this problem solving skill set that's going to help you improve upon your resilience overall. The second way that you can improve upon your resilience is to cultivate adaptability and flexibility. This essentially means that you are not stuck in this little rut and you think that everything has to be this way and when it's something different, you don't know how to manage it. That's not what you want to do in this situation. You want to be as flexible and as limbo as possible because we all know that life throws us those curveballs and you have to go and do what needs to be done in order to be successful. So yeah, you have to be open-minded. You have to be flexible to change your plans, your goals, your timing. All of those things have to have a little bit of wiggle room in order for you to know that, okay, cool. I'm not going to be too hardcore on this because things might change and they may change for the better because change isn't always about something negative. It can be about something positive too. One of the most important things, especially that I have done when life has thrown me some curveballs and throw me some lemons and I had to make lemonade is to see the uncertainty and not being able to see the full stairway. Okay. You could just see one step at a time, but embracing that and not allowing fear and anxiety to pull me the opposite direction. So I saw it as an opportunity for growth, for advancement, for evolution, for me to be a better sense of myself. The third way that you can improve upon your resilience is by having a positive outlook. I have often told y'all on this channel, if you are new here, you about to get another therapy lesson. Your thoughts impact your feelings, your feelings impact your behaviors, your behaviors impact your outcomes. Let me say it again for the people in the back. Your thoughts impact your feelings, feelings impact your behaviors, behaviors impact your outcome. So this essentially means if you think doom and gloom, woe is me, I'm never gonna be this, I'm never gonna do that, I'm never gonna have, I'm never ever this sucks, blah, 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 life has been beating me up. Now, I'm not saying you can't have your moment and wallow, because there's times where I have had moments too, where I'm just like, I'm about to cry it out, I'm about to complain, I'm about to say all of the negative things. But one thing that I do not do is stay there. I go ahead, put my shoes back on, strap up my bootstraps, and I keep it pushing. But that requires a positive outlook on the very thing that wants to take you out. I don't know about you, but have you ever experienced a person in your life, maybe you've seen them on TV, or if you don't know a person at your work or whatever, and they were always positive, like even in the midst of negativity, death, loss, setbacks, family issues, whatever, they just had this optimistic, positive outlook. Now, I believe that some of that is really healthy, and I believe that some of it is not so 
so healthy, right? Because if you can't see things and be real about what you're experiencing and not be positive patty all the time, like you want to make sure that you're being real too, because life be life in. And you don't want to go to one extreme or the other, but you want to take it as it is and as it's coming to you. The fourth way that you can improve upon your resilience, and this is a positive way, is to learn from past experiences. I just recorded another video where I talked about vicarious learning, different learning styles, ways to learn things firsthand, but also ways to learn things from past experiences, watching other people do something positively or negatively, like all of those should impact how we show up, especially in regards to resilience. And this could be from a positive perspective or a negative perspective. You can look back on some experiences and be like, woo, I handled that horribly. <laughs> Next time this happens or something similar happens, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pivot. I'm not going to say this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to save. I'm going to seek counsel. I'm going, you already have a plan of what you need to do. But you can also look back on scenarios too where you did things well. Sometimes we forget about those things and we're like, whoa, I did X, Y, and Z and that was a good outcome. The way I responded was excellent. My attitude, my positive outlook, I'm going to do the exact same thing next time something like this comes my way because it yielded me positive results. And what it does, it builds up that confidence. You know what I mean? Like if you do something well in the past, you are confident that you can do it well again. Even if you don't do it perfect, you are still improving upon yourself to be as resilient as you know how to be. And the kicker for this one is that somebody's always watching you, whether it's your kids, your spouse, a stranger, somebody you work with, a business owner, employee, whatever. Somebody is always watching how you handle things in a good way, a bad way, or in between. And they are learning vicariously through you. So that means you want to go through life, not just with ease and flow, but also to being realistic and understanding that there's somebody watching you. And if they are watching you, your story and your journey, you want them to have as accurate information as possible. So being that role model and trying to do what needs to be done is key. And the fifth and last way to build resilience and improve upon it is to practice boundary setting. Y'all heard me talk about boundaries so much on this channel, but you need to protect your own emotional and mental well-being at all times. And sometimes that means setting those invisible lines that we set for ourselves and other people on our time, our money, our resources, our sleep, our food, whatever boundaries you need to set, make sure you are setting them and you're sticking to them. That helps you build resilience too. Because baby, if you're not taking care of yourself, you're going to be no earthly good to anybody else. One thing that I know is that when you take care of yourself and you do it well, and I'm not just talking about manis and petties and spa days, right? I'm talking about saying no when someone asks you to do something and knowing you don't have the bandwidth to do it. I'm talking about things like that because what it does keeps you from being drained. It keeps you from being on E. It keeps you from having an empty cup. And we know that when we on drain on E, and we're not doing well, our ability to make informed decisions, to improve upon some things, our attitude gets funky, all of those things happen. And how can you be resilient and do all of the things we mentioned one through four when you're on E? So make sure that your cup is full and that you're able to give from your overflow. So let me give my final thoughts on this because it's a wrap. Now, I know resilience is one of those things that we are talking about a lot in this era. We're like, go get it, bounce back, go harder, team all in, hustle, grind, do what you got to do. We just came out of a pandemic, so everybody is kind of like building themselves back up and all of those things. Even years later, we can't negate the fact that the pandemic still has lasting effects on our economy, on our family, on our mental health, on our physical health. And so sometimes the desire to be like, yeah, I'm going all in is fueled by something that is an outside factor. And it's not always something personal that is going on internally with us as an individual. But resilience is one of them things that you got to keep in your back pocket. I don't know one single person that hasn't gone through some type of adversity, challenge, setback, issue that almost took them out. And I'm not just talking about death, but I'm just talking about that just feels overwhelming. Like you're never going to get through it. Like it's too much. What do you do when life throws you curveballs like that? Are you giving in and you laying on the couch and just being like, whatever? Or are you saying, okay, cool. I'm a wallow. I'm a cry. I'm a scream. I'm gonna do what needs to be done. But after that, 
I am getting up and I'm pushing forward to the best of my ability because we also got legacy. As I already mentioned, we got people watching us, but also too, if you have children, if you have all of those things, it's important for them to see you get back up. Just like Aaliyah said, dust yourself off and try again. So thank you so much for watching another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show, and I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.